Folks, if I could have everybody stand, please, for the honor guard and the posting of the colors. Please be seated. Sound check good in the back. 
First of all, uh, I'd like to thank Stacy Sienko for the uh, beautiful rendition this morning. If we can have a round of applause, please. Next, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today on this special occasion. Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, Director Kelly, Colonel McGreal, Lieutenant Colonel Tran, Lieutenant Colonel Lococo, Major Schneider, Major Molo, Interim Captain Santos Orta. We have additional special guests from the area too. State's Attorney James Glasgow is here. Will County Executive Jennifer Bertino Tarant. Tarant. I did it good the second time. All right. Uh, Lockport Mayor uh, Streit is here. Sir, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. And Chief Lemming, uh, who's a retired Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, Terry Lemming is here too. Thank you guys for all coming. Uh, to our distinguished legislators joining us, and most importantly to the Warner family. Thank you guys for all coming. I know some had to come from some distance. My name is Captain Dave Keltner, and until a short time ago, I served as a District 5 captain. And I'd like to welcome you guys all here to find District 5 uh, in Lockport. To the Warner family, Tom, Janice, Sharon, Stephen, the grandkids, and even great-grandkids that are here. We are pleased to be celebrating today's dedication for Trooper Richard Warner, ID 667, that is long overdue. For our most recent tireless efforts, I'd like to thank a few people. First, Lieutenant John Thompson's here from Legislative Affairs. Thank you, sir, for all your help. State Senator John Connor, thank you, sir. Meg Lauren, Lauren Capel, Capel. Yes, second time's good. All right. Representatives Natalie Manley, Dagmara Avalar, and Lawrence Walsh, Jr. Thank you all. And to retired uh, senator, I thought I saw him. Pat McGuire, is he here? Who's here some, somewhere? Sir, I, wa sir, I want to thank you, because I know we started this uh, a long time ago, and, and you're here today to celebrate with us, too. So thank you very much, sir, for, for all your support over the years. Uh, next, Major Dave Schneider, uh, who uh, I'd like to thank because of his unwavering support when he was approached with the idea to recognize an ISP hero, he never batted an eye for us. We stood steadfast, and we, uh, we have a District 5 motto that's just get her done. And he was instrumental in helping us do that. So, Major, I'd like to thank you for your leadership and instilling the ability for us all to grow our ideas and opportunities to do the right things at the right times for the right reasons. To Super Staff Officer Trooper Jose Vallejos here, he helped uh, with the brochure uh, and, and also the program, I'd like, I think that turned out fantastic and everything looks uh, beautiful. And I hope everyone got one. And if you didn't, then we'll make sure that you do get one. So thank you, sir, for all your help with that. To the supporters who assisted us in completing the memorial, uh, the 50th anniversary memorial, which was two years ago, uh, that you see behind us. Uh, Rendell's Towing, Ozinga Concrete, Code 4 Designs, B&J Towing, Midwest Cargo Se Security Council, TMW Towing, and Exxon Mobil. Thank you guys all for your support. For our hardworking crew here at District 5, the ones who put some sweat and tears into building the memorial and the landscaping, Acting Lieutenant Matt Wierzbinski, Master Sergeant Howard Hanson, Trooper Keith Malik, Officers Dan Rankovich and Brian Cezanne from the Will County EMA, and finally Master Sergeant George Del Rio, who is our on-site concrete management expert and uh, led, led, uh, led us to getting it done. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for all your support. A little backstory and insight. We reached a point of digging by hand uh, that reminded us of our river town uh, that we live in and the rocky characteristics that the region possesses. Uh, the frequent breaks, poor shovel work, and insufficient cardio from the crew uh, let, led our team to know that we needed to work smarter and not harder. So with that, we'd like to thank our partners down the street at the IDOT Crest Hill Maintenance Yard. The IDOT folks were able to meet the task with the backhoe and the ex excavator that came and helped us uh, so that we we didn't all need 512 packets after we were done doing all that. We'd also like to acknowledge uh, the special contributions of the FOP Lodge 41 and President Joe Moon, First Vice President Frank Biamani. Without their support, a lot of the special touches today wouldn't quite be the same. Uh, they also contributed to, to help us with the memorial and the landscaping also. The Lodge also provided uh, help, support for some of the gifts that are here today that we're going to present all four children with. The framed license plates we have for Trooper Warner's children is just one of those items, and you'll see that uh, in a little bit. The 524 plate and call sign was Richard's at the time of his death and will forever be retired here at District 5. 
And we also have a, our, our newest 100th anniversary challenge coin for all the children also. We'd like, to thank the, I, we'd like to thank IDOT and the Tollway Authority for helping with the roadway signs. We also have a smaller version for each of you to take with you. I'd like to thank the ISP Command Officers Association that helped arrange the bagpipes and drums. And thank you to the Emerald Society for coming out today. Clint, always been a friend. Appreciate it. Beyond the extensive thank yous, I wasn't quite sure how to begin a speech uh, for today. Usually a dedication speech is heartfelt, which in this case is still easy to do. But speeches like today usually encompasses personal stories of remembrance, which is a little harder given the five decades. But being a decent police officer for some of my career, all right, I pause for the guys in the back to laugh a little bit. I was able to do a little bit of digging and come up with some letters and articles to try to help set a picture. So first from a newspaper article from the days following April 21st, 1969, I found a summary. Trooper Richard Warner was filling out reports in a small one-story Joliet State Police post. It's the same one that you see behind, uh, next to us today, and the one that Tom shared that he remembered attending the, the Christmas parties when he was younger and everybody would meet in the, the front and have food and celebrate Christmas. It continued with Trooper Warner received the call of an accident, auto accident, on I-55 near Naperville Road. At the scene, Trooper Warner found a 1968 Chevrolet crashed into a tree. This is where Warner encountered a fellow veteran who was a driver and was distraught about a personal recent loss uh, in his life. This summarized the initial incident that day, but the article continued to discuss who Trooper Warner was. He was a Chicago Southsider, like some of us. He grew up in the area of 71st and South Park, where he was known as a guy who everyone knew would amount to something. William Myring, who went to grade school with him, was quoted saying that, and he continued to say, he proved us all right. From 1969, I went back and found that District 5 Corporal Herschel Gokin had filled out Warner's uh, evaluation. So our troopers will go through evaluations every year, and we found that evaluation sheet. And on there, it was actually quoted as saying, uh, Gokin being quoted, that he was one of our best men. His annual rating sheet continued to say that he was superior in multiple categories. He was prompt exceptionally cooperative with other troopers and constantly displaying good judgment and reasoning. I further found a letter from Dan Shepard. That name rings a little bell. Uh, the letter was sh is shared a heartfelt reminder of how the loss of Trooper Warner affected many people here in the city of Lockport. He said, I remember it like it was yesterday, and yesterday was over 50 years ago. It was like we were all family. So many people here in Lockport knew each other. He said, my father Don knew Bob Georganis, Ron Elder, and Kenny Engstrom. They were all friends and all were troopers. He continued, Steve and his son and I went to grade school and high school together. They went to St. Dennis here in Lockport and into Providence High School in New Lenox. He mentioned of Shirley and how she was a tough but a great teacher at St. Dennis. He continued that Mr. Warner had a purple Ford Galaxy that he, he'd never forget. He continued, Mr. Warner had a voice that commanded authority, but he was a gentle spirit deep down. Further wrote that Steve and I played football together at Providence, and Mr. Warner and my father took turns driving us to practice into games. He added, but Steve was just like his father, not an enemy in the bunch. He got along with everyone. Today we honor a hero who was loved by his family, his community, and his ISP family. And he lost his life trying to help a troubled soul. In closing, we have a family saying that goes as simply as, it is said that we all may die twice, once when the good Lord calls us home, and second when no longer speaks of the stories and, and tell good uh, stories about us. With this proclamation, the monument, and the dedication, we have cemented that the second will never take place for Richard. Thank you all for coming today, and thank you to everybody that made it possible. And God bless you all. And remember, integrity, service, and pride is not just an ISP mo model. It is a tradition instilled in us by every Illinois State Police officer that has come before us. With that... I'd like to bring to the podium our next speaker, Senator John Connor, representing Illinois in the 43rd Senatorial District. He continues to be an ISP friend and sponsored the proclamation bill in the Senate. Sir. Thank you to everyone gathered here today, and particularly uh, to our state leaders, Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, and Director Kelly for allowing us to show the Warner family today that even in the highest 
offices in the state of Illinois, we respect and honor the sacrifice of their family member, Trooper Richard G. Warner, today. I need as well uh, to echo the sentiments of Captain Keltner in thanking Lieutenant John Thompson for helping me to get this resolution going and get us here today to dedicate this highway to Trooper Warner. I would also like to echo his thanks uh, to uh, Terry Lemming, uh, who, uh, who brought this issue to my attention um, when I first got into the legislature. And I need to thank Sharon Hare, Trooper Warner's daughter. Sharon was the person from the family that I contacted initially two years ago, and Sharon is the reason that this went from a priority of mine to a passion of mine through her wonderful descriptions of her father. So thank you for that, Sharon. We're gathered here today to name this portion of Route 53, the Trooper G, Richard G. Warner Memorial Highway. In addition to that act honoring Richard G. Warner, the trooper, for his sacrifice, I'm asking everyone present here today to take the opportunity to personally thank the members of the Warner family that are here today, particularly, <clears throat> particularly his four children, Tom, Sharon, Janice, and Stephen, as a way to honor Richard Warner, the man, the man whose absence has been felt by this family since 1969. The loss to the Warner family of a father, a husband, a brother, an uncle, a grandfather, a coach, and a mentor is a type of pain that may dull a bit over time, but never goes away. That pain, that empty seat at the dinner table that the Warner family has paid on our behalf for, for the last five decades. We need to recognize that. Collectively, as Illinoisans, we've benefited from Trooper Warner's protection and his service, the risks he undertook when he joined the Illinois State Police. It is our solemn duty now to honor and uphold the memory of his sacrifice through this dedication so his memory is not diminished by time and will never be forgotten. When I first spoke to Sharon about her father, I was asking for background information about her father's career beyond what I was able to see in the headlines. What I wasn't prepared for is how the sadness in her tone as she told the wonderful stories about her father would affect me. And it was those conversations that motivated me to, to ensure that we got here today. Sharon was able to make her, fa her father come alive uh, in the most amazing way through her anecdotes. And on a day of solemnity, and reflection on duty and sacrifice, we still need to celebrate Trooper, Wagner, Trooper Warner's humanity, including his sense of humor. Sharon, excuse me, Sharon shared two stories with me in particular that stuck out. The first was, when her, was from her childhood. She talked about how her father would belly laugh when she played chopsticks on the piano with her toes. When I think of Trooper Warner now, a man I never met, that's how I think of him, laughing at his daughter with her toes on the piano bouncing. The second story involves when Sharon applied for the job of the Frosh Soft sports editor for the school newspaper at her high school back in the 1950s. After she was initially refused, because it was the 50s and she was a girl, her father approached the school with a simple request. Before you refuse her the job, see if she can do it. After she passed an interview to test her sports knowledge with flying colors, she was hired immediately. I'm certain there are hundreds of other stories about Trooper Warner that his family can tell, but these were the two that really helped me, as someone who didn't have the privilege of knowing him, to understand, at least in some small way, what his family lost on that day in 1969. Before he became an Illinois State Trooper, Richard Warner already well understood the meaning of the word duty. When his country asked him in the 1940s to serve, he served in World War II in both the Atlantic and Pacific theaters, including the three-month-long battle for the island of Okinawa in the Pacific. When he joined the Illinois State Police in the 1950s, he was tasked with protecting and serving us here in the community, and he undertook that duty here at District 5 a location that he has consecrated with his life. His primary duty, his family, 
he took care of in Lockport, just across the bridge from here. And when he encountered a fellow World War II Navy veteran who had already attempted suicide and had a breakdown, he didn't hesitate in his duty that day either. In fact, he went above and beyond it in order to attempt to help that person with an unforeseen and tragic result. So today, our duty to Trooper, Trooper Warner and his family continues to honor his memory and ensure that the state of Illinois always remembers his sacrifice and the sacrifice that his family made on that day. Your presence here, all of you who are here today, helps us to discharge that duty, or at least in part to discharge it, by dedicating Route 53 here in his honor. I want to also thank all of you here today for helping us show support to those who currently protect and serve us in Illinois law enforcement, a number of whose members are here today with us. They need to see that we keep the memory of our fallen heroes in our minds, whether their end of watch was five days ago or 50 years ago, and that we keep their families in our hearts. Those of us who have worked with officers and troopers over the years know what an amazing group they are. But someone just relying on modern media coverage might get a skewed view. Trooper Richard G. Warner was an extraordinary individual, but his character is reflective of the character of the vast majority of our law enforcement. I would ask everyone here today to honor him by ensuring that the public understands what we here know, that 99% of our officers and troopers are protecting and serving us during an extraordinarily difficult time to be a cop. And we owe it to them to not judge them by the 1% that never should have been on the job to begin with. In the newspaper description of his wake and funeral in 1969, it mentioned that more than 3,000 people attended his wake and over 250 officers from Illinois law enforcement from the border with Indiana all the way south from Champaign came to honor him at his funeral. I hope that we have done him justice here today by all of you being out here in order to help honor his memory. And with that, I'm going to introduce my colleague from the legislature, State Representative for the 86th Dif District, Lawrence Walsh, Jr. Larry. Thank you, John. Welcome, everyone, to this solemn event here today. Um, I'm not going to be as long as my colleague in the Senate. It's one thing in the House that we don't do. But, um, you know, this is, this is a, a remarkable day here to take after five decades of trying to work on uh, an idea, a memory, and make it come to fruition. And Sharon, I had a phone, couple phone calls with you uh, on the very last days of the session to try to get this done, and we were able to achieve that to make this day happen. And, and I drive this highway multiple times a week, and actually I got to see the sign last week when I was coming back home um, and it looks very, very nice. And at the end of the day, you know, in the legislature, you're there, you do a lot of different things. The one thing that I love about it is you get to learn, and you get to learn about your districts and your area. And this is something that I, did, I was not aware of, and I got a lot of history reading up on it and just seeing the remarkable man that Trooper Warner was and the family man that he was outside of being an officer. Um, and, and, you know, that's just a little tidbit into what being a legislator and elected official is, is getting to understand your community. And as I can see here today, looking out uh, amongst the crowd, is we have a very strong community here. And we respect the, the police officers that, that protect us, whether they're on the city level, the county level, or our good friends in ISP. And, you know, this is just a tribute that will always be here on Historic Route 66 honor the memory of Trooper Warner. So thank you for everything you've done to make this into fruition, and it's been my honor to carry it in the House of Representatives. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next, it is my honor and privilege to bring up the Director of the Illinois State Police and a Navy man himself, Director Brendan Kelly. Good morning. 
I'm honored to be here today with Richard Warner's family and the community to celebrate his life and to honor the ultimate sacrifice that he made. We're grateful to have a member of Trooper Warner's family joining us here today. This weekend at the nation's capital, myself and many other members of the ISP family were joined by the President of the United States in honoring our fallen troopers from 2019. And today we reaffirm that timeless commitment by honoring a noble soul who died in 1969, 50 years before. On behalf of the men and women of the ISP, our troopers, our special agents, our forensic scientists, our telecommunicators, our analysts, inspectors, our support staff, I'd like to extend a special thank you to Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, Senator Connor, Representative Walsh, the Illinois State Police Government Affairs Team, and particularly the outstanding troopers of District 5 and all who have worked hard to make this day happen. We are truly appreciative of their efforts. And of course, it's great to see my friend, uh, Leader Manley, Representative Degmar Avalar, State's Attorney, Glasgow, my old colleague, and Senator uh, Lofren Kappel, who's also here. Thank you all for being here. It's my honor to be with you today as we remember Trooper Warner's life and service to the people of Illinois during this ceremony, which comm commemorates the dedication of the Trooper Richard Warner Memorial Roadway. On April 21st, 1969, Trooper Warner was shot and killed by a suicidal man right here in this building, the Illinois State Police 5 headquarters. He brought this man to the station for questioning after he'd been involved in a crash on Interstate 55. It was suspected that the crash was an attempt by the subject to commit suicide. While inside the District 5 building, the subject was able to gain control of another officer's weapon and shoot two officers and fatally wounding Trooper to Warner. The shooter then turned the gun on himself and took his own life. I know it is difficult to go over these facts and to remember what occurred. But at these moments, it, it, it must be said. It has to be said. We have to face the reality of the very difficult work that the men and women of law enforcement do. That's how we remember. And Trooper Warner was a United States Naval Reservist, a fellow Navy vet, and served World War, in World War II prior to joining the ISP in 1957. He was assigned to District 5 after graduating from Cadet Class 49. During his time in District 5, he was certified as a juvenile officer, working with kids. And he served as a leader in this district. In 1960, Warner received a special commendation from the United States Justice Department for locating foreign sailors who jumped from a dock ships in the region. And in 1968, Warner received commendations for leading the district and arresting seven car thieves just that year. At the time of his death in the line of duty, Trooper Warner was a 12-year veteran of the Illinois State Police. And he was survived by his wife and his four children. The Illinois State Police saved countless lives by protecting the citizens of Illinois through rigorous law enforcement and patrolling of the roadways of our state every day. And every day they brave ever-present danger to assist the stranded motorists, to investigate gun, drug, and human trafficking, to stop public corruption, to bring closure to devastated families, to stop dangerous driving and dangerous individuals. And Trooper Warner is an example of the dedication of the Illinois State Police, and it is fitting that we honor his sacrifice today. As a state, as a people, everyone here, we are all continuously involved in the pursuit of justice. Justice for all people in all its forms. But it is specifically my duty as a shepherd of this agency, privileged to work with these brave men and women, to say clearly and unequivocally, there is no justice for anyone without the law. And there is no law without law enforcement. And there is no law enforcement without the kind of rare and special souls who are willing to die for that, who are willing to risk it all for justice and safety for all. They are the few who quietly dedicate their careers and their lives to serving the public 
and to helping others without fanfare, without glory, and sometimes without a thank you. But they do it because they believe in it, because they've been called to do it. And God knows we need more of you. That's my privilege to introduce our next speaker, someone who I know believes that in her heart. And I know that every time we've had a lost trooper or one of our troopers injured, or she has the opportunity to see the amazing men and women of the Illinois State Police in action, she always reaches out to me with words of encouragement, words of love and support and respect for the men and women of the Illinois State Police. And that's why it's my privilege to introduce her, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. Good morning. Thank you, Director Kelly, for that warm introduction and for your leadership. Governor Pritzker and I stand with all of you today in commemorating the life and service of Trooper Richard G. Warner and all those who have put their lives on the line to protect our state. Our administration has always been committed to the safety of our officers and though we weren't there on that fateful day in 1969, we carry that pain and that loss with you. And we will never forget Trooper Richard G. Warner. Because we are one state, through every tragedy, we stand together. And by leaning on one another, we can overcome grief. Healing is not about running away from grief, but learning how to move forward despite our grief. With this dedication, I hope this stretch of Route 53 can represent the path to healing, a road to peace. For Trooper Warner's family and loved ones, for our law enforcement, and for the entire Lockport community. I would like to take this moment to thank Senator John Connor and State Representative Larry Walsh Jr. for their work in helping this community to heal. You are shining a light on Trooper Warner and the legacy he left in Lockport, and I applaud how you stand up for all veterans and law enforcement through your efforts. I'd like to acknowledge all my friends and former colleagues in the General Assembly who helped make this happen. You showed what it means to stand together as one state and to honor the brave state troopers, past and present, who have kept us safe. You led with heart, and thanks to your collaboration, Trooper Warner's service will always be remembered. To this beautiful family, may God bless you all. You will remain in my prayers. To our veterans who are here today, thank you for your service. Please always remember that your mental health matters. And to the troopers and other members of law enforcement joining us today, we stand with you. We support you. Be safe out there. Thank you so much. And I'll turn it back over to Director Kelly. Now, real action large or small by all of us is what counts in life. Action motivated by never forgetting. And today, 52 years later, we are showing that the Illinois State Police and the people of Illinois never forget. They say no one truly dies until their name ceases to be spoken. And as a result of the proclamation being issued by the governor today, he is using his authority to direct myself and the Secretary of the Illinois Department of Transportation to ensure that during the ISP centennial, every fallen ISP officer during the century of ISP service is so honored in perpetuity. And therefore, no Illinois State Police officer's name will ever be forgotten. From the day Chris Lambert died, and every day since, and with his very first budget, and with the Capitol Bill, the ISP has been on the governor's heart and mind. And that's why it's my honor to introduce the 43rd governor of Illinois, Governor J.B. Pritzker. Well, 
Well, thank you very much, Director Kelly. Thank you for welcoming me and Lieutenant Governor Stratton to District 5 headquarters this morning. To you and to all the leaders in law enforcement who have joined us today, ISP Director 5 Captain David Keltner, Lockport Police Chief uh, Terry Lemming, and the troopers that are here today. I commend you, and I have the utmost respect for the work that you do, that you've chosen a career in law enforcement, and for the bravery that you demonstrate every single day that you go out and serve the state of Illinois. To Senator John Connor, Representative Larry Walsh, thank you for your commitment to your constituents and your partnership in public service. Mayor Steve Strait, <clears throat> State's Attorney James Glasgow, uh, Will County Executive Jennifer Bertino Tarrant, Leader Natalie Manley, uh, Senator Mike Hastings, who I think has joined us now, Senator uh, Meg Cappell, thank you for joining us, uh, former Senator Pat McGuire, thank you for your service. And thank you for all that you have done, the collective of you, to strengthen Will County and to strengthen our entire state. Today we are here to honor a life lost in service to community and country. Trooper Richard Warner's last act on earth was one of grace, offering a helping hand to a fellow Navy veteran struggling and suffering, fighting demons that many of us who have not seen combat could hardly imagine. Steve, to you and to your siblings here today, you've experienced a tragedy that very few others do at such a young age. But I also know from my own experience losing my father in 1972 that you've found your dad again and again in the decades since, in moments big and small. Time may not heal all wounds, but it does offer the comfort of remembrance and for you the comfort of pride. And to all of Richard's loved ones and descendants who are here today, thank you for the privilege of remembering his life and legacy with you. The ones we love never truly leave us, certainly not those who we count among our heroes. And because of the leadership of Senator Connor and Representative Walsh and the support of the General Assembly, every Illinoisan who passes by this building on Illinois Route 52 will know the name of Trooper Richard Warner. The establishment of the Trooper Richard G. Warner Memorial Highway is a fitting honor for a man who was a cornerstone of his community. And in another commitment to honoring the integrity, service, and pride of our troopers, as we head into the Illinois State Police Centennial, as the director has said, I'm announcing today that Illinois will honor every state trooper who has paid the ultimate price in the line of duty with an official highway recognition, a designation. It's another way that we show our reverence to those who served us and to their families. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do to all the troopers that are here today. Thank you for the sacrifice that the family of Trooper Warner has made over the years. The loss is felt today by the people of the state of Illinois. Thank you. Uh, next to the podium, I'd like to bring Stephen Warner, youngest son of Trooper Warner. Thank you all. Uh, my name is Stephen Warner. I'm speaking here as a family representative as the son of Trooper Richard G. Warner, on behalf of my three siblings, Thomas, Janice, and Sharon, and our extended families. I will start by giving thanks to my sister Sharon, who never stopped working with state officials to make this naming ceremony happen. So she calls out 
a special call out. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the entire list of people that Captain Kelton read out. It shows us that it's a combined, complex political maneuvering to get things done, and they all did. And I want to call out a special thank you to the governor, as I mentioned to him privately backstage. His mere presence here acts as an amplifier for the message we're all trying to send about mental health. So thank you to the governor. And now I'm going off script for a moment. As I've been sitting here listening to the speakers, I observed the back row and it's the trooper standing there while we're sitting at attention. And it brings back the reality for those who've never been in the service. No matter what the political structure sets up, the captain, the lieutenant colonels, all the high ranking officials, when there's danger, people run away. The only ones you can count on to run to the front are standing in the back row. And I'd like, when this is over, if you would all give them a little appreciation. And now I will return. And speaking in 2021 about events of 1969, it's useful to consider these through the lens of both context and the passage of time. The life and death of Trooper Warner can also be viewed through his personal life as separate from his career as a police officer. Some aspects of both were reported in the newspapers in 1969, and some of those will be mentioned here. A short version of his death would be that he was shot and killed by a fellow United States Navy veteran, Raymond Hurt, who had tried to kill himself that morning by crashing his car. Mr. Hurt had been despondent in the prior week because of a death of someone he knew. He had previously been treated at a veteran's hospital after suffering from what they called then a nervous breakdown. Maybe more treatment would have saved him, and thereby our father. While preparing for today's ceremony and somewhat reliving the events of April 69 again, we were soon saddened to see that another family had suffered a similar loss. On September 30th, it was reported the trooper Gerald Mason had been shot and killed on duty in uniform on Chicago Expressway. His official portrait could have been taken in 1969 with his ISP campaign hat, including the silver braided cords and the metal emblem that has never changed. Soon we saw the anguish and pain of his family. It was like learning about distant cousins you'd never met. But you just knew they were just like you and they would forever bear this wound. Later we learned it was a suicide, another case of undiagnosed or untreated mental health issues that led directly to this tragedy. I knew then that I should mention the Mason family loss when I spoke of this ceremony. It was 1969, revisited in 2021. It made me realize that there's so much that hasn't changed, including the diagnosis and treatment for severe mental health issues such as suicide prevention. Now for Richard's personal life, I'm going to mention a few facts to give you some context of his life experiences that he had before he came on the job. He grew up in the Depression on the south side of Chicago, the middle child to older brother Joseph and younger Mary sister, his, his younger sister Mary. In 1942, he graduated from St. Columbanus High School in June. In August, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy. In 1945, he served in the Battle of Okinawa. As that was so long ago, I will provide some detail. 
Okinawa was the bloodiest battle in the history of the United States Navy. Indeed, Okinawa was the bloodiest battle in the entire Pacific War. This has been noted by many, including prominent historian, writer, author, William S. Manchester, who was wounded in, a, in a Okinawa while serving with the U.S. Marine Corps. That experience shaped his literary work for the rest of his life as he tried to convey the after effects that all survivors had carried. As the Marine Corps Gazette stated, quote, more mental health issues arose from the Battle of Okinawa than any other battle in the Pacific during World War II. While Richard never knew, or never had, I mean, he never had what is now known as post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, suffered by so many, he had seen enough cases that he was very sympathetic with any veteran who had gone through the stress of war. So no one should be surprised that he tried to help Mr. Hurt, a fellow veteran of the Navy. Yet despite a childhood of poverty and the horrors of war, Richard was a dedicated, concerned family man, father and husband. He often worked two jobs, one of which is right down the road from here, a concrete plant formerly called material service. Always scrimping to save enough to send four children to Catholic grade schools and high schools, he would later second mortgage the house to pay for the first person in our family history to go to college, our sister Janice. He loved playing softball as catcher for the police team, often playing against teams drawn from the local fire departments. These were family events, kids everywhere you looked. He also really enjoyed getting up early to go fishing with his police friends, although in reality, there was rarely enough time to squeeze in for that with his very demanding schedule. As to his career, he finished the police academy and sworn, was sworn in November 15, 1957. Then sometime in the mid-60s, Richard started training as a juvenile officer, the first in the district. Still in grade school then, I would ask continually, why did he always have to go off for training for this? He would reply with variations on a theme in a manner and language appropriate to my age. That it was very important to help juveniles before they got into so much trouble, he was very clear, that they could never get out. In the news of 1969, his commanding officer, Captain Robert Georgiana said he was truly interested in helping young people. By 1969, the ISP troopers had been through years of mass protest, the 68 riots, cities burning, and as always, the continual mayhem of traffic accidents and crime. As noted in the Joliet Herald that year, while there was often overtime work for the troopers of the ISP, there was no pay for overtime. I believe that situation is different in 2021. At his, at his funeral, his sister, by then Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Mary Warner, United States Air Force Nursing Corps, was flown back from her wartime duty in Vietnam and stood there with the oldest brother, Joseph Warner, also a former war, World War II combat veteran. At St. Dennis Church, which we can see from here, Reverend Edward Hughes paid special tribute to a policeman, quote, who lived for his job and died at his job. Father Hughes described the police as defenders of our civilization in a quote from him. He issued a challenge for parents and teachers alike to awaken to reality that police are enforcers of the law and order so others 
can live their lives in peace, end quote. All these comments resonate loudly in 2021. When Richard's eldest son, Thomas, had gone off to war in Vietnam, Richard was able to comfort his wife, our mother, during the long, worrisome absence. Richard did get to see Thomas return from the war in Vietnam in 1969. However, Richard was no longer alive to comfort his wife as their oldest son went for a second tour in Vietnam in order to see the joy of Tom's return a second time in November of 1970. Richard didn't get to see any of his four children get married. He never got to see any of his grandchildren. In the 60s and 70s, there were no police memorials as we know them now. No walls with names of the fallen. Those came later in Washington, D.C., in Springfield, Illinois, and right here in Will County. There were no roads named in honor of police officers killed in the line of duty back then. Because of that, I am speaking here today, instead of staying in the comfort zone of the audience, as I normally prefer to do. I know what my father would have wanted me to do to make a plea for better mental health care for those who need it the most, especially those with the additional stress that is very common to military, fire, and police work, what we now call first responders. And also I want to note that this is needed not just for the newest members, the newest responders, but even for those like Trooper Mason who have served for years, perhaps without realizing that lifetime immunity to stress mental health problems, including suicide, is never guaranteed. I hope I didn't lose the last page. In sum, viewing Richard's life through the lenses of time and context as well as his personal life experience separate from his police work, it is clear that he died the way he lived, always ready and willing to help others. I will conclude my remarks by quoting the closing paragraphs from the Joliet Herald article dated April 25th, 1969, which is, was the day after the funeral because the main points are still valid in 2021. There will be reflections and so many unanswered questions about Monday, April 21st, 1969, when the path of a plant worker and a policeman crossed at Interstate 55 and Naperville Road. One wanted to die. The other tried to help him live. And there were two funerals Thursday, April 24th, 1969. Thank you all for listening. At, <clears throat> at this time, if I could have the District 5 supervisor step up, please. And Governor, and Lieutenant Governor, and Director, if you could assist me, I'd like the four children to come up. We have gifts we'd like to present to you.
Thank you. And at this time, if you could please bow your head for a moment of silence for Richard. And at this time, I'd like to bring up Pastor Troy Schaff, Illinois State Police, District 5 Chaplain. And sir, thank you on behalf of all your troopers here at District 5. You, we've uh, given you a lot of work lately, sir. So thank you for being here today, and thank you for all that you do for us.
Let us pray. Very Father, Lord, we thank you for Trooper Warner getting the honor that he deserves. Lord, we thank you for the family members, the legislators, government officials who have worked tirelessly to make this day happen. And Lord, this is a joyous day as we celebrate his life, who he was as a person, as a father, and as a trooper. It's also a very somber day as we think of his sacrifice and as his death. Lord, we think of the words of Jesus when he said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So Lord, we thank you truly for his sacrifice. And Lord, we thank you for every man and woman that puts on the uniform, pins on the badge, and goes out and stands in the gap and makes a difference. I thank you for those special people that are running towards danger as others are running away. These heroes who face evil head on and protect those who can't protect themselves. We're also grateful for troopers like Warner who are not just enforcing the law, but are truly trying to help people. So Lord, we ask that you would continue to give comfort and grace to Richard Warner's family. Even though it's been 52 years, Lord, we know that pain is still real. So Lord, would you wrap your loving arms around them? Would your grace be sufficient for every pain and memory that goes through their heart? And Lord, we ask that this dedication today would be an honor to him, but also to his family and to every family that has lost a loved one in the line of duty. So Lord, we thank you for this fitting dedication. We ask that this stretch of Route 53 will be a memorial for many years to come to the sacrifice of not only Trooper Warner, but to every trooper and every law enforcement officer who has given their life in the line of duty. And Lord, we are a country that owe a great debt to our veterans. So we ask for forgiveness when we haven't given the help that they need. And we ask for wisdom and compassion to those who still need help. We pray for our veterans who have the invisible mental and emotional wounds that still need to heal. So we pray for all who are serving and all who will serve. We ask for protection, guidance, wisdom, and healing. Lord, we thank you for our government, our elected officials. So Lord, we ask for a prayer blessing on our Governor Prisker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, the senators, representatives, the mayors who are represented here today. Lord, we ask that you'd give them wisdom to make the best decisions to serve with distinction and integrity. We thank you for our troopers who serve and protect the citizens of Illinois. I pray for Director Kelly as he leads the Illinois State Police. I pray for every trooper that puts on the uniform today and the days to come. Will you protect and guide them as they strive every day to be the highest example of integrity, service, and pride? So we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. That does conclude our ceremony. Safe travels to everyone. Thank you for coming today.